Over the past decade, the Foreign Relations Committee has convened every couple of years at the full committee level to assess the state of U.S. policy towards North Korea. And through successive Republican and Democratic administrations, this committee has received testimony from U.S. government officials highlighting the seriousness of the North Korea threat. There has been surprisingly little variation in their overall descriptions of the danger and recommended policy prescriptions. Undoubtedly, we will hear similar testimony today from our witnesses on a seemingly intractable nature of the North Korean threat. And we thank you again for being here. Former U.S. officials have all characterized North Korea's nuclear and ballistic missile activities as posing serious and unacceptable risk to U.S. national interest. These same officials also stress the importance of standing with our close regional allies, South Korea and Japan, in the face of destabilizing North Korean provocations. In addition, they all cited the necessity of cooperating with the international community to deter further North Korean provocations and prevent the spread of sensitive technologies to and from North Korea. They all noted the importance of enforcing UN security sanctions um, on North Korea, specifically the need for China to exercise greater influence. And in recent years, U.S. officials have spoken increasingly of the deplorable human rights situation in North Korea, including highlighting North Korea's notorious prison camps. Of course, there have been some differences in the approaches towards North Korea over the years, particularly with respect to the tactics of engaging North Korea in appropriate balance of carrots and sticks. Yet it's apparent that in the past several decades of U.S. policy towards North Korea, uh, it is apparent that it has been an abject failure. Through successive administrations, North Korea's nuclear and ballistic missile capabilities have continued to advance while the North Korean people remain impoverished and subject to brutal treatment at the hands of the Kim regime. I appreciate the complexity of the risk posed by North Korea and our limited options. However, it certainly seems that more could be done to bring to address this issue. For example, at my request, the GAO recently completed a study examining the implementation and enforcement of U.S. and U.N. sanctions on North Korea. The study found that more than half of U.S. member states have not provided required sanctions implementation reports to the U.N., with many states lacking the technical capacity to prepare such reports and enforce sanctions. I recognize that submitting a required report to the UN will not be a game changer. However, with North Korea's proclivity for employing evasive techniques to acquire prohibited nuclear and ballistic missile related technologies, it is certainly plausible that they are using some of these countries to acquire transfer or transfer illicit materials. What are we doing to encourage or assist member states to submit these reports? Moreover, are we harnessing existing U.S. resources, including our export control programs, to raise awareness of U.S. U.N. obligations related to North Korea? Another area where there's clearly more to be done is forced labor in North Korean, of North Korean workers overseas. We know that the Kim regime sends a large number of workers overseas under contracts with other governments and foreign companies. What is the U.S. doing to persuade these countries to end these North in the use of North Korean forced labor. Before turning to our witnesses, I would like to acknowledge the efforts of our chairman on the East Asia Subcommittee, Senator Gardner. In his short time in the Senate, he has demonstrated considerable leadership on the North Korea issue and in introducing legislation and convening his subcommittee a few weeks ago to discuss this very issue. There is no silver bullet solution to North Korea, and I understand that, but I'm committed to working with Senator Garden, Gardner Senator Kane and others on this committee to see what Congress can do, and certainly Senator Cardin, our distinguished uh, ranking member, to move the needle on North Korea. I hope we will, able to, we will be able to have a thoughtful discussion today that outlines U.S. interest in maintaining peace and stability on the Korean Peninsula, and more importantly, lays out tangible options to reduce the hazard posed by North Korea's weapons of mass destruction programs and provides hope to the beleaguered North Korean people. I look forward to hearing from our witnesses. I want to thank our ranking member for the way he helps lead this committee, and with that, turn to him for his comments.